art friends and welcome to my watercolor channel. I'm Laurel Hart and for the past four years I've been posting these free watercolor teaching videos on YouTube to help those wanting to improve their skills in watercolor. It's been a really good way for me to give back to the artist community and hopefully share some of the knowledge that I've gleaned from many wonderful teachers who've taught me over the years. It's been a good run and I have met so many of you wonderful fellow artists from around the world who love this medium as much as I do. But the demands of producing these videos have become somewhat of a strain to put together both on my end and on the end of my producer, who happens to be my son. We've loved doing them, but they do require a lot of effort and preparation. So after thinking long and hard about it, I've decided it's time to start a second YouTube channel, one that will be less time consuming and easier to post on. It's simply going to be called More Laurel Heart. I'll be filming these little videos by myself on my phone, so they will definitely not measure up to the quality you're used to on this channel. But they will be shorter to watch and not take as much of your time or mine. The emphasis will be more on quantity <laughs> rather than quality, so I can post more often than I've been able to on my main channel. And happily, I won't even have to appear in these other clips. I think it will be a fun endeavor and give us a chance to get together more frequently. I will still keep this channel going, continuing to post a full-length video about once a month like we've been doing, where you'll be able to watch the full process in real time, showing the drawing, painting palette, photo reference, and hearing my explanations as I go, without any music. Anyway, I wanted to let you in on this new adventure and hope you'll check out my new channel, which is already up. Again, it's called More Laurel Heart. My first efforts at filming by myself were pretty pathetic, so you may be in for a little hilarity as this grandma tackles technology. Here's what happened on my first attempt when my son walked in on me and realized I was filming all wrong. You've got this the wrong way, by the way. I do? You're filming with that camera? Yeah. What am I supposed to film? Oh my, oh my goodness. What am I supposed to do? Use one of these cameras. That camera on that side is a piece of crap. Well, what, how do I know what I'm not using those? Because they're pointing up. Are you filming the ceiling? No. <laughs> but how do I change it? You're going to have to show me. You flip your phone over and use the right camera. Well, that camera my, you're using is a piece of crap on that side of the phone, no offense. Flip my phone the other way. Well, why didn't somebody tell me? Is that I how you shot all your other ones? I didn't shoot any others, really. I just did a pretend one. Okay, well, we got work to do because that's the first mistake. <laughs> so, as you can see, I have much improvement to make, but um, I have been at least trying to get my phone pointed the right way, and it's coming along. Rest assured, though, that things won't be changing on this channel. Um, it will still be what you're used to, and the quality won't change here. Now, moving on to today's topic, I want to talk about edges in watercolor. Years ago, I saved a funny cartoon from the newspaper that sets up this topic perfectly. It's a little cartoon called Pickles, and um, I think it... Um, is something we probably can all relate to as artists. Anyway, this um, woman here says to her husband, sometimes an artist has to look at things in a different way. When I take my glasses off, the whole world looks like an impressionist painting. Everything loses its hard edges and gets broken down into bits of light and color. It's really quite beautiful. Then you hear this big clunk, ow! And then the grandpa says to his little grandson, I think she found a hard edge. <laughs> I think that is um, a cute cartoon and there's a lot of truth in it. We artists go to crazy lengths to find ways to create impressionistic loose paintings. And one of the best ways that we can do that is through the use of soft and loose edges. Our human eyes don't see in sharp focus throughout our whole range of vision. Um, as a little experiment, uh, look forward and focus your eyes on an object 
And you'll notice that the edges of that object that you've selected will have sharp or hard edges. But as you keep your attention still focused on that same object, notice that the things in your outer or peripheral vision will be softer in focus or a little more diffused. And you maybe can't even tell exactly what they are. One giveaway to amateur um, artwork, especially in watercolor in my opinion, is that inexperienced artists will often paint the entire scene or subject with all hard edges, having everything in sharp focus. But this is not the way our natural eyes see and it, it looks um, odd or wrong. This makes it hard for the viewer to determine what it is that the artist is wanting them to focus on and it can also create a bit of monotony or even confusion as to where to look. Using all hard edges creates too many stopping points for the eye and does not allow a smooth visual pathway through the painting. An experienced artist, on the other hand, will usually create the hardest edges where he wants the focal point of the painting to be, as hard edges call attention to themselves with softer edges being used in the lesser important parts of the painting. Using a variety of edges will add excitement or mystery to a painting, and definitely a sense of looseness or impressionism. There are several ways that you can create soft edges in watercolor. I'd like to show just a little um, demo here. I painted these little um, blobs or shapes here. This first one um, was uh, using wet in wet. I wet the paper and then I dropped in the color and a second color and just let those edges blur and merge together. This next one here is I started on dry paper with um, the, the color in the middle here and then I took a damp brush and pulled the color out, uh, diffusing it as it came out from the edges. This example is where um, I let the color dry and then using a damp brush I massaged the edges of the, of the object and um, let them bleed a little bit more. But you can see that it doesn't, um, doesn't leave quite as soft an, an edge as when you touch into the wet color. Another way to create a soft edge or to lose an edge is to paint uh, two similar values next to each other. And um, even if you don't let them bleed, it will sometimes read as a, a lost edge there. In this example, I took um, a wet flat brush and wiped some of the color out. And again, it leaves more of a soft edge or a soft shape. And then in this example, I used paper towel to blot the wet paint. And it will pick up the paint um, pretty well. It, it will still leave a lot of the color, but it will soften it in places where you might want to, uh, to show a little bit of texture. Um, so those are some good um, examples, I think, of um, different ways that we can create soft edges in watercolor. What I'm going to be painting today is um, this example here. It's just a big urn with um, leaves and flowers in it. But I chose this one because um, I want to have this um, center of interest of my subject come forward. And in order to do that, I'm going to have hard edges around most of this um, arrangement in the vase here. And same with this. I'd like to call attention to that. So I will sort of outline that with a harder edge. But my hope is to make this back part more diffused. Um, another thing that a loose, loose edges will do is push things back into the background or um, give more depth or um, dimension to the painting. So um, that's what I'm going to do with this background. Beginning now, um, I have my drawing on a um, 140 pound uh, cold press Windsor Newton paper. 
And um, some of you have asked me if it would be possible to have access to my um, reference photo and my drawings. Um, so in this demo, I am going to um, post a link to both of these in the description where you could print these out if you would like to, uh, to have them to try this demo yourself. I'll be using an assortment of um, round brushes. These are synthetic brushes. Um, and I'm ranging from uh, a number six to a number 14. And then a couple of different mops um, I've got here too. So to begin, I will um, I think start out with a number 10 here. Um, and I'm going to begin with my usual method, creating a, a triad of color, um, manganese blue, alizarin crimson. And in this painting, I'm going to use a high key yellow. This is cadmium yellow medium, really strong yellow. But my, my greens, I want to be high key in this um, in this painting. So they're going to be, um, I'm going to keep that um, brighter yellow. So I'm going to begin just randomly um, covering my paper with these um, three colors. And um, I am going to focus somewhat um, somewhat on here this time as to getting my greens where I do want them, as well as my um, my reds here. I'm going to pull in a little bit. little bit of a stronger red there too. And just, um, I'm just continuing to cover everything in a um, variety of these three colors. And I know right now it looks very, um, almost garish. But as I, as I continue, um, with this, oh, that's not what I want. As I continue, um, coming in with um, a little bit um, of more muted triads or colors as I go, then this is not going to look quite as garish as it does right now, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I'm going to, I know that I want this area right in here to have a very bright green. So I'm even going to add a little bit of green in here as I'm, as I'm doing this. And I'm going to take a little bit of my paper towel and wipe out uh, some of these um, lighter leaves. So you can see I'm demonstrating that technique that I told you about of the, of the um, blotting technique. Okay, and I want to continue with this green coming down in here as well. I 
I'm going to um, let this color bleed a little bit into these lighter pink flowers up in here. And again, pick out some of that color there. So I'll have some pink at the end in there. And down into here. So I'm using my original um, triad, but I'm adding to it as well, especially with this painting that has so much green in it. And I'm trying to leave a little bit of a band of sunlight across there, which will set this um, edge of the plant off. Okay, and then while this is wet, I want a very nice, um, okay, it's kind of a grayish, grayish greenish almost color in there. But I want that all to bleed together through there. And I'm putting in the shadow right, right as that's still wet, coming down onto the um, urn, I don't know what to call it. Uh, And a little bit more warmth in it. And again up in here is a little more of a shadow coming down on there. My palette's kind of a mess um, as you can see but <laughs> I can't do too much about it right now. And this back in here, it's really dark where the edges of the plant are. Casting shadow. And I don't want to get um, to where I've got too hard of edges here, so I have to keep moving along, coming back and forth.
and I'm just going to bring the, these leaves down here. Like they're coming. Okay, this is some of the brick back there or a uh, stone. Own, um wall, I suppose is what it is. And I didn't quite finish this off either. It has a lip of shadow coming around it there. Okay. And I don't want this over in here to dry on me either. So I've got some some dark um, color going in over here. And I don't want it to be too hard edged either. So I'm just letting that all bleed in there together. That's where that shadow is. I want that a little bit dulled down, a little more of a gray. And I'll pull some of that out too because that's actually on the light side there. And then another pretty dark shadow. Probably put a little purple in that under the edge of that overhang thing. And that stone's got a little more warmth in it, so I'm going to put a little bit of orange in it. And then our um, sunny side over here is a lot lighter. I've corrected my drawing here. Um, this line is not really what I'm going by. Um, and then I do want to pull, uh, while this is wet over here, I want to pull this blue shadow in over here. And also the on the lip of this um, stone. <laughs> I have no idea what that is called. 
And I want this stone down here to be a little warmer. But with some cool in there too, it's got And I think it's even um, a value, a little value darker than that too, so get a strength in that. I think that I will wet this whole area here and I, I want a diffused edge on this shadow stuff here. So I'm going to let that um, dry a little bit and then I'll come back in with the shadow there. I need to come clear over that thing that I did a mistake on. While that's drying a little bit, um, I'll start working this area up in here. Let that leafy stuff blur back in there. And that's darker than I wanted. Okay, let's get our um, shadows in over here. And I don't want those to blur totally together, so I'm going to blot them a little bit. Put just a touch of the pink in there too. I like keeping um, the color really clean in the shadows. Um, and maybe down here where it's coming more into the foreground, um, we could have a little bit of a harder edge. Things usually get sharper into focus as they come closer to us. And they should um, strengthen in value a little bit too. So try to do that a little bit. Sometimes it's kind of fun to poke a little bit of the whole triad in the shadows. up that bead so I don't get a backwash. There, so it's subtle, but you can see the whole triad is echoed in the um, shadow there.
and I will pull out some of these kind of diffused light splotches on the wall back there as well. And Okay, that should be making a little more sense with what the wall's doing back there. All right. Okay, it's kind of time to start working in some of the real darks now. I've got um, most all of my middle and light values in, and it's it's really going to be when I get this third level of values in that things will start to um, take on more dimension and look more real. But right at this point, I'm happy with my balance of um, soft edges against hard edges. I think um, I kept some nice diffused edges up in here and a nice hard edge where I want the viewer's eye to go at my center of interest. I'm going to work a little more down in here to get the values a little more correct in there. Um, and right in here, um, The there's a real dark value right here that I'm, I want to get in there to at 
at the center of interest, I will also use smaller shapes and be a little more tedious, which also catches the attention of, of the human eye. So it gets a little busier where the, where the uh, center of interest is going to be. And working back into this um, first wash, I can and I can now be adding more layers of uh, color and just giving it in general more dimension of uh, looking like there's a lot of leaves and stuff going on back there. But again, I want to I want to stay soft back here, so I'm not competing too much with this area that I where I want people to to look. But you can see now how um, I'm covering up a lot of that really really bright color that was in the background, but letting a little bit of it poke through here and there. And over in here, I want a little bit of that um, that uh, kind of brassy color, or I don't know what that really is. Color is. Okay, and over in here, some more really dark. Um, really dark value back in here. Skipping over a little bit of uh, spaces to still look like there's um, more stuff happening back there.
Okay, so that's pretty much what I had in mind with the, the background being really diffused back there and still trying to keep the color clean, but um, but uh, and at the edges of the plant, I'm giving it a little more detail as well. Usually, it's kind of best to keep detail at the edge of the subject or, or object. Let's see how nicely that's setting that off now. And that is an area where I do want those hard edges to um, define that really pretty cascade of, um, what is that called, vine, potato vine. So I'm happy with that so far there. And then up in here, really interesting shade of um, leaves up here, kind of a brown. And you can really overdo this, so you need to be careful. <laughs> careful when you're coming back in with these other little pokes of hard, hard edge. But it does, it does need it um, in some places to define, define a little bit what's going on. I need to work some um, depth back in here too, from the edge of that um, bowl.
Okay, I can see I really need to strengthen things down in here. Um, Just trying to indicate the overlap of those leaves. Putting in a little bit of cracks. Okay, I need a, a dark in here to um, to set that off in between and under here there would be a shadow of dark like that as well. Just putting in a little calligraphy of the stones back here. Feeling like that needs to go down a value, so I'm going to just go over that a little bit more. Yes, I think that reads a little better. And then over in here, we've got um, to do something similar with I want that pretty, um, pretty blurred down in there. Um, it looks like there should be a little bit of shadow coming through here as well. And then I want to pull this out again. Okay, that's better. I'm going to add a little bit of um, yellow in here, though, because I'm 
Maybe getting a little muddied in there. Okay. And then this down in here is darker too. I need to darken this area by quite a bit. Okay, and I kind of maybe don't want a real hard edge there either.
All right, I'm feeling like I'm weak. Um, right up in here. I want that to um, stand out more. Okay. And just up, up in the flowers here. Um, And now one thing I'm going to do to the background, I, um, sometimes I will do this just to, um, diffuse a background and push it back. I'll just take manganese blue and go over the whole thing. just to set that back all the way. This is bothering me a little bit here. I know that's in the light, but...
and I'm just going to put a, a light wash over this. I don't know why that's bugging me, but it is. I'm just smoothing edges with water here. And I, I feel like, I feel like some of this has got to go, um, back into some shadow too. Probably not all of that would be in light like that. Yes, I think that helped. So we'll do that same thing over here. There should have been more shadows being cast on, on those different leaves, I think. Just knock this back a little bit there. Okay, well, I, I think I'm going to stop here. Um, creating soft or blurred edges can be a tricky technique to learn in watercolor, and I still struggle with it myself uh, a lot of times but it's definitely worth practicing to get a handle on it. We use the term in English, on the edge, to mean sometimes that we're on the point of losing control, which is truly a good definition to apply to edge control in watercolor. Sometimes we're on the edge of disaster when we're trying to create a loose painting, but that's half the excitement um, is the risk in painting in watercolor. I hope you've enjoyed this um, video with me. Thank you for joining. And again, I hope you'll check out my new channel. Um, it'll be called More Laurel Heart. Thanks for being with me, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye. Hello, and... Um, blah. <laughs> But keeping your attention still focused on the same object. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> okay, sorry, where were you? Let me start that paragraph again. Which one? Ar yeah. <laughs>